So we actually have a lot of experience with octreotide, which is really the active somatostatin receptor ligand in micapsa. So it's a uh, well-known drug um, in, with well-known data in the field of acromegaly, but it, now it's packaged in a new form. And so for patients who have uh, been on somatostatin receptor ligands, which are monthly injections, which can lead to pain, loss of independence because you have to schedule the injection, you might miss work or a family event. We now have an oral option. And so what's interesting about my capsa is, you know, if you eat a protein, your stomach digests it. My capsa contains octreotide, which is a peptide, but it's protected from the stomach uh, by a capsule. And it is uh, mixed with what we call transient permeability enhancer. And so that peptide makes its way to the intestine. The cells in the intestine are able to open up and uh, transiently and absorb that peptide undigested. And we know that it gets into the bloodstream and we know that it does the same work as octreotide if octreotide was in injected. So it's really exciting to have an option that delivers a really well-known drug, but in a new way. Um, I was a site investigator for that trial, Optimal, and uh, it was an international collaboration uh, and approximately, I believe 38% of patients came from the United States and others from Europe. And uh, it was a very unique trial design. In the past, when we've looked at new treatments for acromegaly, these have tended to be comparison trials or switch trials. They didn't have a placebo arm where you know uh, the impact of the drug versus placebo. Usually these would be compared to older medications in a side-by-side -side design, or you might switch patients from one of the known medications, such as octreotide or lanreotide, to a new medication. In this case, this was a double-blind placebo-controlled trial, which I think um, helps us as physicians and clinician investigators to better understand the impact of the drug versus no drug. Um, this was a very interesting trial design because of the placebo control. And so we had a group of patients who were uh, sent to the placebo arm versus a group of patients in the oral octreotide arm. So those could be directly compared in terms of their IGF-1 control. And we know in the capsule arm that 58% of patients maintained their IGF-1 at weeks 34 and 36. This was a mean IGF-1 of two weeks. Um, and this was uh, only controlled in 19% of placebo patients. What was interesting about the placebo patients is that those five patients actually did lose control at some point in the trial. But at weeks 34 and 36, when it was measured at the end, it looked like they had control. But at some point in the trial, all five of those patients had an IGF-1 that rose above the upper limit of normal. Importantly, all five of those patients entered the open label extension because their physicians who were blinded and the patient themselves felt that they needed better control. So overall, um, in the um, oral octreotide capsule arm, we saw that 75% of patients did not require rescue with their prior medication versus 68% in the placebo arm. And further, 90% of patients who completed the trial on oral octreotide capsules went into the extension. So they wanted to continue on the therapy as a choice.